back, everybody. This is Real Talk with Minister J. Renee Williams. Uh, so glad to have you back. This session is going to, listen, you know, we chose some meaty topics um, this season, and they are so meaty, I had to break them down. But I just, I, I took them from a different perspective. Uh, so today we're going to talk about grief. Oh my goodness, Minister J. Renee, why are we talking about grief on Real Talk? Well, why wouldn't we? My goodness, just in uh, this year, this since this whole COVID time, I do believe, like 12, over 12,000 deaths have been due to COVID, just to COVID. But now if you are like me, we have lost loved ones to other things too, uh, um, just deaths, you know, just deaths attributing death, death. Uh, but you know, with, and I, 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 I know wonderful friends, family, loved ones um, who have just literally been taken out by COVID personally, uh, you know, family members. And what does grief do? A lot of times people don't understand the effects of grief. Of grief. So I am going to um, go there with you uh, today, oh my goodness, there we go. And I'm just gonna talk about uh, a couple of kinds of grief. And then, because it's real talk, we gotta go to some real talk in the Bible. And so we're gonna do that. Um, just, hey listen, my heart goes out and I love for this show, I know we wanna talk about some real stuff. We gotta go from a perspective that we don't get to really talk about in the church. I mean, we encourage, and we're supposed to encourage one another. That's what the church is for. But sometimes, as a church, we don't really realize what people are going through, and we mistake what the Bible is saying, and sometimes we try to step in God's shoes and think that we can speak for him when he ain't said nothing to us of the sort, just keeping it real. And I did, listen, I, and I forgot, I don't want to forget this, but let me tell you this. On Real Talk, if you want to reach out to me, you got some ideas, some suggestions, some comments, let me know how this made you feel. You can follow me on um, Twitter, um, J. Renee, Real Talk, or just reach out to me at, uh, I think it is Renee, at Renee, talk, that underscore talk. Um, and then to listen, if you find it as I go through this show or this episode that, you know what, oh my goodness, I know somebody or that's me. Oh my goodness, I do need prayer. Oh my, sometimes we don't recognize uh, grief. We, d we don't recognize we're going through it or that we're even in it. And that's normal. Uh, so um, during, during this episode today, you'll see info at sslive.org. That is for you to reach out to us and say, hey, um, how can I get some help? How can I get some prayer? Um, can you assist me or whatever you need, you reach out to us at info at sslive.org. Hey, you'll see it on some of uh, the slides uh, that we got coming up and I just want you to be aware uh, that is for you. That is for you. The church is here for you. Um, you are in our church family and you realize, oh my goodness, hey, info at sslive.org or you know what, jump on our channel at sslive.tv and um, just see who's in that ministry or, you know, you can, you can find out. We, we've got these resources for you. And hey, church is opening soon. Come on in and we can help you there too. All right, let's get into this. So when we're dealing with grief, okay, and this is the basic, this is the basic. Listen, I cannot go through all the phases of grief and all of this because it is rather overwhelming just to say hey boom here it all is so we're just gonna I'm gonna deal with two different kinds of grief um, the phases of grief we're gonna go through that I'm gonna talk to you about that and then hey real talk in the Bible here we go so on the first one is acute grief or some people call it complicated grief right so um, acute grief it is the unexpected separation from a loved one, right? So acute grief also occurs in the early period 
after a loss and usually dominates the life of a bereaved person or some period for some period of time right so you know you lose someone and you know so in the church if you're if you're doing if you're involved in ministry some kind of form hey you just you just moving you know we're just doing the thing but we're still bereaved hey okay it's normal it is normal quit trying to kick yourself out of it it is normal okay that the next thing is strong feelings of yearning longing and sorrow are typical as uh, typical as our insistent thoughts and memories of the person who died um, Wow I, I could be going I'm okay <laughs> and uh, so, I, for instance, my uncle, uh, who I was real close to past, Uncle Jerry, you know, I watched the movie Soul, and everybody's name was Jerry in the film. Oh, my goodness. I can't tell you what that did to me, and I love the film, um, but whew, just hearing his name over and over, but I thank God that um, I, I won't forget him. So the other thing is that we experience a powerfully painful state powerfully painful state acute grief right you you don't you don't see this uh, coming right and so there are phases of grief there are phases of grief so the first phase is denial then there's anger listen anger is a normal response so it's normal right um, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Listen, when we are in the church, the last thing we want to do is let people know we're depressed because after all, we serve a life-giving God. But guess what? We also have emotions, right? We have emotions. So um, what am I trying to say? We don't, we don't have to fake through the depression. This is, this is, a, this is just what happens. Uh, God did not intend for us to ever experience death, right? So that's why it is so hard uh, for us to get through. You know, we bind ourselves. He puts loved ones in our lives. Um, and it's an unnatural separation, right? But because we have a life-giving God, he gives us the power to get through. So, you know, this, this session is to help us to work through grief or think about where we're at in this grief um, and that that's fine I just sometimes people have guilt because we're in ministry or because we're in church that we're not supposed to feel some kind of way about the people that we lose listen it's a hard thing the next one I want to talk to you about is anticipatory grief right so uh, according to Eric Lindemann um, he designates the process in which a bereaved person goes through all phases of grief. So the phases that we just went through, the, this in anticipatory grief, the person goes through all these phases like before the death, right? So normal mourning that occurs when a patient or a family is expecting a death. This is um, in terminal pa patients mostly, right? And so there I did. I did number two. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so goes through all the phases of grief in advance as a safeguard against the impact expected when the death notification occurs. So like you're just going through all of these phases, you know, just, just pounding away at you while the person is dying. And then, you know, oh, look, we're in denial. Oh, no, the God's going to raise them up. Hey. Let me just talk from my personal experience. You know, when my dad was, you know, in the phases of death, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, God's going to raise him up. God's going to raise him up, right? And people want to say, well, why didn't God heal him? <laughs> I don't know. You know, I don't know, but I still have to go through these phases, right? I'm, I'm not against God because he didn't. I'm glad he went with God if he's going to go. Okay, that's me. So this is what, it, what we call that involves the weight of waiting. It's just heavy. It's excruciating. It's painful. 
um, understand, you know, these are normal, normal things. But I have to go on to something important that I want to get to about that. Yeah. So the next screen on anticipatory grave, grief. So there's a sense of relief with a sense of loss when death finally comes. You know, so sometimes you're at the hospital and, uh, and they're saying, hey, there's nothing more we can do. Um, and even though you're holding on, you're still going through that grief. But when it actually happens, you're like, <sighs> but it's not like you're happy. So uh, please let me say, do not feel guilty because you have a sense of relief, right? Um, don't, don't uh, you know, we, we do this. We say, you know, they're not in pain and they're not suffering anymore. Um, those are like feelings like of gratitude that, listen, at one point, you know, you're trying to accept it. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to get into this acceptance thing. But you know what? Um, can I just tell you this as well, that grief is not on a calendar. You, you can't expect somebody to be over grief um, and, and think, oh, you know, there's instances when people are on their deathbed and God does raise people up. They, they do raise up, you know, and so, you know, praise the Lord, awesome, because God is not finished with that person. That person's not finished what they have to do. And so we believe God for complete healing, right? And so I just, I, wanna, I wanted to say that because we have to get out as a church trying to force people out of grief. Uh, you, you know, we can't force them out of grief. We can't uh, do all of these things and say, hey, yeah, they, they got to be there. Listen, we have to be comforters. I'm so glad that at St. Stephen's, we have a grief ministry. Oh, and they are phenomenal. Phenomenal. And um, we have awesome deacons who help, help us through, um, through the hard times uh, with comforting words. You know, I, I, I thank God for them um, and for all their work they do uh, just to help members and help us all just through these hard times and they don't push us with the wrong thing so I just thank God that but I want to make the whole church aware <laughs> hey we got we got to step back and you know so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us to an example in the Bible where people have overlooked for years and now they use those same concepts to say the wrong things and so um I just, I want everybody to take in what I, I've said so far. Acute grief, anticipatory grief, and then all the phases of grief. Those things are normal. They are normal. And so taking this uh, a side of it, we have to be aware that we don't have to try to hide or put up a front, but we can let people be there for us. So. As we get ready to go into this break, I want you to get your Bible because we're going to Job and I'm going to show you something maybe you haven't seen before. So you get ready and we're going to go on this break and I'll be right back and I'm going to show you grief on this. Everything that I've talked about right in Job. Ready? All right. Be right back. See you in a moment. Hey, I'm Michelle Porter, and I'm here with Tony Wilson Bratter to tell you about an awesome new addition to SSC Live TV. It will be known as The Marketplace. It will be just like we used to have in the gym, but it will now be live via Facebook and YouTube. Are you a business owner? Please submit your name and your number to kymedia at ssclive.org. Again, please submit your name and your number to kymedia at ssclive.org. Now, Tony, both of us know a lot of business owners. Again, I want to reiterate that I need all of my business owners to submit your business name and your telephone number to kymedia at ssclive.org. That's kymedia at ssclive.org. You don't want to miss this opportunity to be part of the marketplace. And join us here at the Stephen, where it's always live. Welcome back. 
back, everybody. I hope you got your Bible. Hope you, so look, look, I, I, I told you that so you can mark your places in there. Uh, this is Jay Renee. We're back with Real Talk, and we are in grief. And now here's your example from the Bible. Real talk, though. So Job, in the chapter, in, in chapter 1, right? So I'm going to do Job 1, 2, 6, and then 42. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through this right here because I want everybody to see something, right? So, of course, we all know um, Satan comes into the heavenly courts, right? And God says, hey, you know what you're doing? Okay, this is, this is J. Renee's paraphrase, okay? But I'm in your Bible. That's why I told you to get it. And Satan says, hey, I, I've been just traveling throughout the earth, hey, just checking out, seeing what's going on. And then, you know, you, you can't hide nothing from God. <laughs> so God says, so you've noticed my servant Job. You know, so in other words, Satan was already trying to get at Job, but he couldn't. And then what did Satan say? Oh, you've put a hedge around him, so I can't get to him. But I know that he'll curse your face curse you to your face, you know, if you take all of his stuff, you got, you gave him all of these blessings. You gave him all of these blessings, and I know if he don't have his blessings, he'll curse you to your face. Because, you know, after all, people only serve God just for blessings. That was sarcasm. That was sarcasm. Please note, sarcasm. Okay, so then he says, okay, go. Take all he has. Don't touch his life. Don't, don't touch him, right? And so now, uh, Satan leaves, right? He leaves, and he goes now, and he tacks everything, everything that Job has, everything. All of his belongings, all of, just so, just remember, um, he says, um, one of the, each servant that survived escaped to tell Job. Right, so from his property. Uh, so the part, though, that I want to focus on is that the messenger, the messenger said, um, fire from God <laughs> has come down. And people think that it is God. But remember, it was the messenger, which means that something was transpiring that the messenger hadn't seen. Who was the one that was coming to attack? It was Satan. God didn't help him. So it was Satan doing, using some kind of demonic thing that the messenger hadn't seen before. And so he's like, wow, this is an unnatural fire falling from the heavens, right? Like the sky. And it, it has burnt up all of uh, the shepherds and your cattle, your sheep. And so now, here comes this unnatural uh, wind that, that makes the house crash down on his children. Okay. So he's running. He's t they're telling Job all of this. What is this? This is acute grief. This is acute grief. But see, here's what everybody focuses on, Job's response. His response was, okay, I came out of my mother's womb with nothing. I own nothing, I had nothing, and now I'm going back there. I, I own nothing, I have nothing. You know what? Blessed be the Lord. So if someone says the fire from God came down, you're going to think God attacked you, right? So God has given and God has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he blessed God even when he didn't understand. But understand that Job was undergoing acute grief my goodness but he still blessed the Lord that mean that meant Satan lost that battle Satan lost that that fight right there so guess what he did he had to go back to the heavenly courts remember Job is still in acute grief you got to process everything yes all ten of his children were killed at the same time my I can't I can't imagine right so now, Satan's back in the courts. All right, skin for skin. He'll curse you if you take his skin. I don't know, man. Okay, God said, you know what? He beat you even when you urged me to lift 
up my hedge. He beat you. But okay, go ahead. Skin for skin. But don't touch his life. So now Job wakes up. He's covered in these serious boils all over his body from head to toe. And now this part has bothered me for years. So I'm going to break it down right here. Job's wife is seeing him now covered. She too is undergoing acute grief. But now what does she wake up to with her husband all covered and, and boils, in serious boils, looking like he's fixing to die? Right, that is anticipatory grief. It's anticipatory grief. Now she is waiting to see when her husband is going to die. And she says, you still maintain your integrity. Just curse God and die. It is not like she was, you know, unkind. She didn't believe in God. She was in grief. She was angry. All her children are gone. Everything she ever had is gone. And now her beloved is under attack, looking like he's fixing to go to. Well, my goodness, you can't blame her for feeling that way because she was angry. She was angry. Everything she loved is on the brink here of being gone for good. Now, what happens? His friends come. Job's friends come. And Job is in such bad condition they could barely recognize him. So we're not talking about you know, hey, just some kind of couple of boils that you pop and keep going. You know, he took the pottery and he's scraping these, these boils off as, as, to, as if to say, this is not taking me out. She's just like, you know what, give up. Just give up. Curse God and die because I can't take it no more. I can't, I can't watch you die. I can't, I don't have the strength to do it. You know, so is, is anybody feeling me here? Can you actually see this perspective in the book of Job? Here come his friends. Here come his friends who have not prayed at all with Job, who have not tried to console him, right? Now they're coming and saying, hey, you, you done done something wrong. You don't want to tell nobody. Really? This is the time to accuse somebody when they're covered in pain? <laughs> no, no. This is why as a church we have to be sensitive. Listen, this is what I had to say. I was like, you know what? I, I can't imagine. I don't know what to say right now, but I am with you. I am with you. I am praying for you, but I am right here with you. That's all I can say. Because guess what? I didn't understand. I'm not going to try to make sense of it. I didn't get an answer. So I'm not going to try to make one. And I think as a church, we should start comforting more and stop trying to find an answer to give. Quit saying, hey, it's God's will that all this happened because you have done some wrong. You're in your sin. Listen, God is a merciful God. And even when we are in our sin, he has been good to us to bring us out of our sin. Okay. Whew. Almost, almost took off right there. So the friends, now I'm in Job chapter six. I'm in Job chapter six right here. They're now, they're all coming with these accusations. Like you must have done something because the righteous never suffer. So flashback, if the righteous never suffer because it was already established, God was already on Job's side. He established that in chapter one. He was on Job's side. Listen, he don't want for nothing. Yes, I have blessed him because Job turns away from evil. <laughs> yes, God is for him. God is on his side. And even though the enemy comes, listen, God has a plan. And if you stay with him, and if you stick with him, and if you hold on, even when you don't understand, my goodness, God is with you. He is close to the brokenhearted. So I'm encouraging you today. I'm encouraging my brothers and sisters. Listen, I know that we are all in some kind of grief, but I'm encouraging you today. Hold on to God. Even when you don't understand, bless his name. You know what? I'm not, you might not feel like getting up and jumping around your house and you know, with excitement, laughing or anything, just say, Lord, I don't understand, but I, I bless your name. Lord, I bless your name. That's all you got. Give what you got to him until he can bring you to give him more. He'll help you. He'll help you. We are also in a different season as Job, so we can't keep using Job because you know what? He's given us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us the strength for what we need in the time that we need it. And if we just need to say, you know what? I'm hurt. I'm angry, but I bless your name. 
I don't understand, but I'm, I bless your name. I'm depressed. I don't feel like going. I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like doing this. I just don't feel like being around people. But I bless your name. So guess what? We hold on to God. Jumping to chapter 42. God is able to bring you through, restore you, heal you, raise you up. You know what? He did double for Job in the end. You know what? And this is what I believe. I believe God gave Job strength to bless his name. I believe he gives us strength to bless his name. Even if it's not happily like we want to, uh, he gives us strength to bless his name in the hard times. And so when we look at the blessing, you know, he gave, he, listen, he gave him 10 more children. Not only did he give him 10 more children, he extended his life to see four generations. And he called, he called Job to live a full life. Listen, if you are still here, God is not done with you. And maybe you can't see his plan, but know that his plan, he has a plan for you. Listen, when the, before the enemy came into the courts, see, God already saw him. Oh, so have you picked it? Have you, have you noticed my servant Job? Listen, God already had a plan. He already had a plan to get him through before he went in. And so God does the same thing for us. He always has a plan to get us through before we go in. So I just want you to know today, and this is what church is about, encouraging one another. And I want to encourage you right here on Real Talk to say, hey, this is the real talk. God is still real. He's still alive. He still loves you. He still has a plan for you. And he still wants you to fulfill the purpose for your life. The only way is if you give up. But we're asking you, and I'm praying, that you just don't give up in this hour. So I want to go ahead and pray for you. Is that all right? Okay, I will. Blessed Father, I thank you now how you love and you care for your people, how you've given them strength in this hour to overcome. Father God, I thank you now that where, where people are grieving all over from all the deaths, from the losses, God, that you would give them strength not to commit suicide. God, that you would give them strength to get up, oh God, to continue on, to fulfill their purpose, to fulfill their legacy, to fulfill their heritage, oh God. I thank you now, Father God, for allowing the Holy Spirit to move, hallelujah, and just give strength to everyone who needs it right now, God. Every person who's watching this show, God, I thank you that you'll speak to their heart what they need to hear in this time to help them, to help them to recover. And so, God, I give you praise right now for strength in our grieving, in our grieving hours. Oh, God, regardless of what phase we're in or if we're in all phases, God, I thank you that you are present help, that you're closer than ever. So, God, I bless your name today. As you touch my brothers and my sisters, your beloved children, oh, God, I just give you praise right now. Uh, for blessing our church, to be able to help each person that reaches out, God. We just give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, for you are truly worthy, and we believe you. Father, we believe you. Help our unbelief, oh God, but we believe you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Hey, everybody, I'll see you next time on Real Talk. This is Minister Jay Renee. God bless you all. Have a good one. See you next time.